Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Rachel McLean. I'm the assistant superintendent with Snyder ISD. Um, and we are going to spend the next few minutes talking about uh, monitoring your students' grades and attendance in uh, Schoology and in Skyward. And I um, am going to share my screen so that we can um, kind of follow along together. Okay, so um, first of all, I would like to share with you where um, you can find the grading policies. We'll talk about grades first. I want to show you where you can find the grading policy on our Snyder ISD website. So if you go to SnyderISD.net uh, and you just type in the search button, uh, grading, the very first option that pops up, uh, we'll discuss grading guidelines. And so this is for each campus. So um, you can see we have uh, some grading guidelines for pre-K through K-1, um, and then a, a different set of guidelines for primary uh, grades, second and third. And basically the difference is that our lower grades, our pre-K through first grade follows what's called standard-based grading. And then uh, primary through high school uh, follows a more traditional um, grading system, which is like a letter grade or a number grade. Uh, but the reason I wanted to show you this is that um, by Friday afternoon at five o'clock, grades should be updated in Skyward. And so that's a good time. Um, maybe if you'll want to set a, a time on Saturday to check your students' grades, you can see the progress that your student is making throughout the week. Our junior high campus uh, is our charter partner and they have a little bit different guidelines and you can just click on the link here um, in this document that you find on our website and you will pull up um, the junior high grading guidelines. So that's a resource for you as parents to understand um, what you should be looking for, what you could be expecting um, from our teachers as, way, uh, as, way, as, as they communicate your students' grades. Um, so we were going to go first into Schoology. Before I start into this process, um, I, if you have questions as we're going through, uh, we have a chat feature or a Q&A. Uh, please feel free to enter any questions that you have in the chat box or the Q&A feature. And we have um, panelists here with us that will be monitoring that. And we'll either try to address it as we're uh, talking this, uh, today or we will um, uh, address it in our frequently asked question document, which is also available here on our website. If you click on our help center, you can um, um, take advantage of our communication um, there with our website. Okay, um, so in Schoology, this is the platform that we're using on our primary, our intermediate, and our high school campus to help um, uh, with the uh, virtual learners or the face-to-face -face learners and then our uh, students that are having to go back and forth because of exposure to COVID. And uh, so this is, this is the platform. And we are going to, I'm going to show you today from the perspective of a parent logging in. Um, and so I'm going to sign out and actually go through the whole process. Uh, so in, you should have received in the past um, few weeks an email from Schoology that has your um, username and your password. If you have not received that or you do not know how to access Schoology and you have a student on one of those three campuses uh, on our help section of our website, uh, there is a, a form that you can submit and we will uh, get your information out to you as to how you can access your student information. But if you go to Schoology.com, it's going to um, uh, pull up a uh, Schoology page. You click at the login, and then you uh, would enter your username and password. It will also ask you for a school. And so we've entered this fictional uh, student uh, under Snyder High School, and then you would log in. And what pulls up is 
um, the page that you would see as a parent. And so our fictional student is Isabel McCurdy. And so we're viewing this page as Isabel could see it if she logged in uh, into her Schoology. And as a parent, things that I would encourage you to uh, focus on and, and uh, help support your children when monitoring their grades, uh, things that uh, would be on this dashboard. So first of all, you can see some recent activity. Uh, Isabel has received some grades in, on three separate assignments. Over here, we see that she had a, an assignment due on November the 2nd and it is overdue. And we also see that she has some upcoming assignments that's due tomorrow and again on Friday. If you're curious about what these assignments are look like or, or uh, what the child should be expected to do, these are all links that if you click on the link, it actually takes you to the assignment. Um, again, this, this doesn't look exactly like an assignment would uh, that a teacher would really be producing, but you can see that it would go to the assignment and then you could um, you have a better understanding of what your student is missing. So that's the dashboard that would pull up immediately. Last week we went through a lot of information about how to how parents could uh, learn more about Schoology and, and how um, the tools and the resources that are available and that webinar is uh, posted on our um, on our website if you'd like to go back and review it. But Basically, there are two tabs that you're going to be most interested in uh, are the courses tab, and this would show you the, the classes that your student is enrolled in, and then the grade report. And so under the grade report, it would show you the classes that the student is in. You could click on the grade book. And it's thinking. Um, you can click on the grade book and it'll pull up the assignments that have been uh, posted for the student, any grades that are there with the student. And from the same, just like you can from the dashboard, you can also click these links and it'll take you to the actual assignment um, that your student can, um, that your student is responsible for. If you go into the courses tab and click on the uh, course, you can see the listing of materials in the course, but you can also look at the grades um, in the course and you can see specifically for that course, which is, this is the exact same look that we were just in and looking at the grade report. While we're here, I'm gonna uh, point out how you can communicate with your students' teachers. Um, and you can do that in several different ways. So inside the course, so we've clicked the course, we've selected the course, you can click members and it'll pull up the instructor and you can send a message to the instructor here. So if you have a question about your students' grades or what, whatever, this is a way that you can communicate inside of Schoology in the courses. If you are, um, if you are on your, your dashboard, you um, may also be able to uh, communicate with your, um, with your teacher, your student's teacher, um, by again going to grade book, um, looking at the individual assignments, it's going to take you. So if you have a question about this specific assignment, it would take you back to that same location. Um, so those are just ways that you can interact with uh, your student's teacher um, in a relatively uh, quick fashion if you're inside of the Schoology platform. Also in Schoology, um, so we're looking at the student account, but this is the parent account. You um, can go into your settings as a parent and under notifications, be able to select what information you are wanting to receive on a regular basis. And so they're divided by uh, different categories, but uh, for the purpose of our conversation today, if you're wanting to maintain um, updates for your student regarding their academic progress, then you could click on or off on any of these items that you would like to receive notification about. Um, the same if you would like to get any information from, um, uh, like if you send a message to the teacher or whatever, you can get notification that you've received a, me a message back. If you're not always around a computer, you can uh, set your notifications to come to your cell phone. And so just by clicking this and inserting your cell phone and choosing your carrier, 
uh, your notifications will then uh, come to your, your cell phone. And so these are ways that as a parent, you can um, kind of stay on top of what your students' assignments are looking like, what they have upcoming, um, anything that they have missed. Um, and so that's a, a great tool for you to um, for you to be able to use. Um, I will say before we leave this, um, when you are looking at the grade report, you may see a lot of different grades. And when you go and look in uh, Skyward, your, you may not see quite as many grades. And so teachers are given a lot of feedback to our students uh, through Schoology. And just like if they put a check mark on a piece of paper uh, that they might have sent home in a, in a folder at the end of the week, the weekly folder, um, the teacher may not always take grades on the check marks. Um, and so our teachers are syncing the assignments um, or sending the assignments to uh, Skyward and those are the official grades that a student is, um, is being held responsible for. And so those are some, um, some tips on how to use Schoology as a way to monitor your students' uh, grades and assignments. But like I said, um, Skyward is your actual official grade book. And so to make sure that we are, you're covering both bases, and to log into Skyward um, under Family Access. And so if you're not familiar with where to get to this Skyward login, if you go back to um, our homepage, our Snyder ISD page, under the family and students section, you'll see a link to Skyward Family Access. And then again, we're, this is our fictional information. You're, you would not have to pick a drop down. Um, you're gonna log automatically into family and student access. And this pulls up what we consider our official grade record and our official attendance record which is in Skyward. Um, so in, at, at this dashboard, you can see a lot of the similar uh, information. So we have an upcoming assignment that's due tomorrow. That was the information that uh, was available in uh, Schoology. I can click on the calendar option over here and I can see the additional assignments that are coming. Um, one thing that's different in our Skyward uh, calendar is you'll see school holidays and some in-service information. You'll see the end of grading periods, but the assignments are um, are populating in both calendars, in the Schoology side and in the Skyward side. On Skyward, the grade book that's listed here, this is our official grade record. And so you may see um, different numbers of grades entered, or you may see, um, you know, some, some um, different grades that if you added those up, they might look uh, different than the number here, but this is the official grade book. Um, you can interact with this grade book just like you, you know, can in Schoology. By clicking on it, you can pull up the information. You can see the teacher uh, of the uh, course. Uh, you can see the days that it meets. Um, and if it had an actual period, you could get all the information that you needed about the actual course. Under display options, you can choose to show all of the grades. And so this would be progress report one, cycle one, which would have been the first report card, progress report two, cycle two, which would be the second report card after the second six weeks, all the way through the year. For this purpose, we've only entered a grade um, that has populated in the, in the cycle two. But um, for those grades, you can click on the grade and it'll pull up the information that's related, that's generating that actual grade. So this 94 is coming because uh, the student has had a, a 94 on a Snap, Crackle, Pop uh, test or research project. Um, you can also see, just like in Sky, uh, Schoology, there were two assignments that were upcoming. Uh, the due date on those are December the 4th. And so as a parent, I would not really be concerned that this student was, um, you know, had missing grades here because it's not even due yet. If it looked like it was going to be a big project, I would definitely want to inquire and make sure that my student was working on, you know, what they needed to um, uh, for this work. 
Um, and so that's a view that you can have uh, to just understand the grades a, um, a little bit better. Just like in Schoology, you can also um, set up notifications in Skyward, and this is, I would highly recommend these options for our, our parents. And so I clicked on my account. This pulls up some just general account settings. But under email notifications, parents um, may opt to have uh, grading emails that would be sent to them or progress report emails that um, can be sent to them. And progress reports can be received daily, weekly, or monthly. And then the grading emails, um, like high school has set some expectations as to what these grading tasks actually look like. And so if a student is missing assignments, if they've received um, an assignment that's pulling their grade downward, if they um, have received an assignment that's lower than an 80 or a grade that's lower than an 80, these are all um, uh, reasons that you would receive a grading email and those come in um, once a week and gives you information to own your parent own your students progress in the class um, and then these progress report emails these are for parents that want to just kind of keep a, a closer eye on things as opposed to waiting for the three-week progress report grades or definitely the six-week or nine-week um, report cards as a parent, I always selected the weekly option. And so every Saturday morning after the grades were posted on Friday, I would receive a progress report email and then be able to talk with my child about um, missing grades or any concerns or you know, congratulations on performance, those type of things. And so those are two, uh, the two programs that we are using um, at, to help communicate uh, our grades. Um, to our parents, uh, all four of our campuses use Skyward as a, the official grade book. And um, this is a great place for parents to help um, support their students' academic achievement. Um, the other piece of this webinar today we want to talk about is attendance. So all attendance is taken in Skyward. Um, and um, because of COVID, and some of the challenges that the 2021 school year has presented, um, we have we've tried to offer a lot of different options to suit as many of our learners as possible. So first of all, a, a student can be face-to-face. -face. So this is just like we've always had school. Uh, if a student is a face-to-face -face student, uh, they are marked present when they are in the class, um, you know, in the desk, at the, you know, ready to work and the student has a um, attendance code of present. If a student is um, not present in class um, and they're a face-to-face -face student, then they're marked absent. Um, and that absence is um, until we receive documentation. Otherwise, that absence is considered unexcused. If a student is opting for virtual, and so a virtual student may be one that has that because of health concerns or health concerns with their family members, have, they have opted to attend class virtually on a rate on a full time basis, or they may have been exposed um, or uh, they've tested positive for COVID and they are on virtual instruction on a, on a more short term basis, 10 to 14 days. Um, either way, those students are marked absent as well because on a our virtual students have 24 hours, or actually to 7.59 a.m. the following morning to complete their work that's been assigned to them in Schoology or for our junior high campus been assigned to them in, um, in Bright Thinker. Um, now some classes have expectations that students are to Zoom uh, in at a certain time, and that's part of their attendance requirement, uh, but then they'll also have um, assignments and work just like they would in, if they were a face-to-face -face student to complete and they have till 7 59 a.m. Teachers are going back in um, once a student is marked absent and, and, and they complete their work in the time period allotted and they're changing that absent code to what's called asynchronous um, and that is um, that is considered that that student is you know attending class and um, the attendance is adjusted. So those are the those are the 
formats, we have, and, and taking attendance this year has been a challenge, not just for Snyder, but across the state of Texas. And so school districts across the state are continuing to refine these processes um, in order to make sure that, um, you know, Snyder's goal is to provide an instructional environment for everyone to the greatest of our ability to meet the needs of our families. Um, and so those are the options that are out there. When you, um, when you are looking at your child's attendance, this is the best button to use uh, to monitor attendance. Now we have not entered attendance on our fictional student, but I'm gonna pull up a screenshot of what this might look like. Um, when you select this button on your um, family access. And so this is a student example. You can see that on several days they have attended asynchronously. It tells us the period. It also tells us the classes that they have uh, been marked uh, asynchronous present for. Um, this was during our snow days and we um, had an option for families that did not have internet. We had some power issues. We have some families that do not have access to internet. And so this no internet is um, just a code that we use so that students were not penalized for an absence. This is a teacher tardy. So when our students are tardy to class, um, they are still having um, you know, tardies. Uh, we still may see, you still may see school related absences. So if a student is, um, you know, on a, a athletic trip or, or those type of activities, you may see a school related absence. Excused absences are those absences that are marked unexcused and then there's documentation that have, that's um, made available, a doctor's note, um, you know, a court document, those kind of things, and then they're marked excused. And then a nurse excused absence. Um, if a child starts having symptoms at school, needs to or have uh, has had a close contact or exposure, you may see a nurse excused absence. Um, again, those are those are not counted against the student. Um, the ones as a parent that you should be concerned about when you see these, as a parent, I would be concerned about. I'd always want to talk to my child about a tardy, especially if those tardies are in excess and if there were um, unexcused absences. And so um, those are the conversations that as a parent, I would um, encourage you having. One thing that we are working on um, and making sure that our our systems are communicating as clear as possible is with our progress report. So in, um, in the notification section back in Skyward, um, where you could opt under my account to set your email notifications. Uh, if this, uh, if our Ms. McCurdy had accept, uh, selected to have an email notification. So here on Saturday morning at 8.30, this parent received their student's progress report for the week. And so you can see the cycle grades that are standing here for the student. And then you can see the absences. And so we recognize that um, and, and are in the middle of working towards better um, documentation. As a parent, this is confusing. And um, basically the way our system is working, the way Skyward is working, is it is counting asynchronous present um, or asynchronous um, codes as an absence and it's really not as an absence. And so on your progress report that you would be receiving weekly, this information is still not aligning to the actual information of what a parent needs to look for. And so again, I'm gonna stress the best place to monitor your child's attendance is via the attendance button that is on the family access uh, this button here and it'll pull up this look and you can see the individual days uh, and the individual coding. Uh, we are working on uh, repairing that uh, progress report reporting information so that you can better tell when it's a true absence um, but that um, is, is something that we're having to work with through our Skyward system. We have received some information that parents are, you know, receiving phone calls um, or, or notifications that, you know, my child is virtual and continue to get notifications if they are absent. 
We've turned our phone call notification system off. And we were having, we have about 25% of our students at any one time in virtual instruction. Some of those are uh, short term, you know, they, because of COVID exposure, and then some of those students are more long term. Um, so we are not sending those phone notifications, um, mostly because it's um, our system is registering it as an absence. Um, but if parents have selected to receive daily progress reports, then they are going to continue to receive information that their student is absent. We do not control the settings of the parents. And so if the parents want to go in and adjust their settings or just understand that the absence is um, the best way to look at that is again through that attendance um, button currently, um, then that would be, um, so we're all you know, communicating as clearly as possible. Um, I do want to stress that the 90% attendance rule is in place. And so if a student is going to have 10% or more unexcused absences um, from a class, then um, the grade, the, the credit to be earned in that class is in jeopardy. That's a state law. Um, and we are just wanting to make sure that, that we are communicating as clearly to our parents as possible um, when their student is absent and how, um, um, and, and giving their parents as many pathways as possible to support their students. With that being said, I want to remind everyone, you know, last week on our webinar, we talked about the Schoology app. If you have students in uh, the primary, intermediate, or high school campus, I encourage you to download the Schoology app to your phone. It's available in the, um, the Play Store for uh, Android or the, um, the Apple Store in, for um, iPhones. That allows you in your hand to be able to track the same information that we're showing you on the screen. And then we also are communicating quite often with our parents through Parent Square, also available as a download for our, um, in the Play Store or the Apple Store. And that you can set up specific notifications that you're wanting to receive for the campuses and for the district. Um, a lot of our teachers are communicating heavily with Parent Square. And so that's a great way to maintain um, ongoing communication with your, with your um, teacher and your campus. So I'm going to check the chat. Okay, so I do not see any questions coming in on the chat and I do not see any questions coming in on the, the Q&A. We have about a minute left. Um, if you have anything that is, um, is something that we can address or I am going to type my email into the chat feature since um, and share that information and feel free to shoot me an email with any additional questions or um, uh, any way that we can help support uh, parents in our grading and our attendance uh, in communications. Okay. I don't see any questions coming in. Um, so it's 530. I want to be respectful of your time. I definitely appreciate your attendance. Uh, next week, we will have our uh, third series in our family connections. We will be focusing on um, how parents can support their students use, uh, with um, safe usage of technology and um, safe usage of uh, internet and social media resources. So we look forward to seeing you again next week. And by all means, uh, please reach out to us with questions or, or ways that we can help support you. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you.